Something I don't think people often realize is how often we take the sight of color for granted. Uh, most of us are born into this world and then open our eyes to this overwhelming palette of visual variety. Everything seems so fascinating and new. The vibrance is immersive. But sadly, as we get older, our minds tend to become accustomed to the visual sense, and this interest of colors falls by the wayside in favor of other, more newer interests of sensory pleasure. But even so, the colors remain even if our interests diminish. Uh, the subject for today is a brief exploration of color, the visual phenomenon we witness, the concepts and meaning we attribute to them, and some discussion on its presence in our current age. A bit of everything, I guess. So what is color? Well, in the most literal sense, the scientific sense, it is the wavelengths of visible light that are not absorbed that eventually reach our eye to be translated into visual data. Pretty straightforward. But what is color in the artistic sense? There are so many ideas and opinions concerning color and its meaning as it appears in art. Color can be enticing, invigorating, emotive, or even deceptive. Color can be even so effective as to influence how we interpret the world, to a greater extent reality itself. Color holds such a place in the universe that it would have existed at the dawn of time, long before any of us, before the original forms. Whether you believe in the Arche, the, you know, the seven-day story of creation, or if you believe in the Big Bang, in the beginning, the first thing that emerged from the void was light. Color originates from light, and like the gods having descended from the titans, so does color originate from the primordial essence of light. Similarly, colors in their various combinations, shades, tones, and hues could be seen as the smaller descendants of the original generation of lights. That we can explore at another time. Now I want to dip into color theory for a bit. Color theory encompasses a series of multiple concepts surrounding the arrangement and implementation of color specifically as it concerns artistic design. This is where we get ideas like complementary, analogous, contrasting colors. The color schemes is another way to describe them. Aside from practical application, color theory also includes commentary on cultural uses of colors and psychological data on how colors interact or influence our brains. My ramblings are more on the practical side of color, how we use them and how we order them and then how we implement those orders and their numerous combinations. I'll touch on the psychological aspect of them, because for anything, we want a solid reasoning behind our decisions. We need an explanation for our choices and why they are the ones we made. So, color. We know where it comes from, but what can it do? Well, color can elicit responses in our minds under different circumstances of presentation. Color gains more power when it is applied to form, and an even greater power when given subject. Color on its own is primordial, raw, and unfocused. Unfocused in the purpose, but not in its existence. Any color we see is a refinement of white light. Color is a focusing in and of itself. Primordial is in reference to either before or at the beginning of time, and since color is refined from light, and light was among the first things in being, color is primordial by nature. Such raw material would inspire, likewise, raw sensory feelings or emotion. Thoughts and reactions to color would also be tailored based on the color and its location in the visible spectrum. Other influences such as hue, saturation, um, shades, tints, tones, etc., etc., would distill the natural primordial essence of light. Light is distilled into color, color is distilled into lesser color. The whole becomes concentrated, and the concentrated becomes refined. That all being said, what kinds of colors are there? Well, the answer to that would take far too long to go over, but for reference's sake, there are, as of now, approximately 10 million different colors in the world that we can perceive. There are, in fact, more. However, our perceptions are limited by our biology. This estimation is not concrete, and fluctuates due to the fact that everyone doesn't see color the same way. Color is determined by our eyes, processes. The state of your cones may be more sensitive or dull than mine are. 
Thus, your color is not the same as my color. This simple fact exponentially magnifies the amount of color combinations that exist, or exponentially reduces the color combinations that exist. But it does not alter the length of the visible light spectrum. There is a beginning to our perception, and there is an end, and all colors must fall between these two points. So breaking down the colors into comprehensible groups is dependent on which way you follow color theory. Some have more, others less. For my rambling monologue, I will use the chart that I used in university. So this wheel has 12 color sections, which are red, blue, yellow, orange, violet, green, magenta, purple, blood orange, cerulean, lime, and tangerine. Now remember, color theory is still a theory. It is not law. Some of these names are contestable. You all may have different names for the colors. I'm, I'm just going off of what I had learned in university as it was translated to me by my professors. Uh, so yeah, some of the names are contestable, not to mention the RGB, CMYK, CMK ways of organizing color all vary in how colors flow into one another and which ones take dominance in the wheel. Again, this is what I learned in university, and it was the standard I learned from my professors. So, now that we have color, its potential, and order explained, I can touch on the various things we associate with them as humans. What I'll do is go through each of the 12 colors, but to start, I'll begin with the primary colors. Those broad swath, commonplace chromas. Then the secondary, then tertiaries. Now, I also want to make a disclaimer before I really get into this. As it is with light becoming color through a concentration of individual wavelengths, the same can be said of the associations we have with said colors. For example, love and hate are two separate emotions, both symbolized by the color red, but both are related by their primordial essence of passion. Both love and hate are a passion. So that would mean passion is the original emotion, or in this case, primary association. Red is both love and hate, but when all is dissolved back into its original primordial form and the color is in its purest chroma, true red is associated with the essence of passion. Red is passion. So of the primaries, we have red, blue, and yellow. Or to start, red. Red is the essence of passion, as I've previously stated. Red is the first color grouping we see on the visible light spectrum. It all begins from there. Beginnings are raw, intense, wild. Passions fly all around and mix together as they spring up. And in that heat, colors are vibrant and hostile. Minerals subject to intense friction begin to melt, generating a furious shade of red. And red is the color of blood, raw life forces. Red can be blush, indicative of attractions or furies. Red is both the head and the tail of the coin. Love, hate, fury, and heat. Passion is the meaning of the color red. Blue. Blue is the essence of stasis. It is far off distant as the sky or the depths of the ocean. Of all the colors, it is the coldest and lowest in intensity. The color evokes a sense of stillness. Cold may be a kind of stillness, but stillness of action is also a possibility. After all, what evokes more stillness or suspension than the cold? Blue is also inherently mysterious. The purest chroma of blue is one of the rarest colors to appear in nature. It is easier to be found in minerals than any animal or plant. It was seen as divine due to this rare quality. Many colors are emphasized when included with blue, and many more are stabilized with it. So stillness, coldness, and stabilizing. Stasis is the meaning of blue. Yellow. Yellow is the essence of awareness. Out of every color that is designed to grab your attention, yellow is the most prominent. Uh, road signs, warning signs, alert lights, everything that emits this color is designed to grab the eye and say, look at me. In plants and animals, yellow can indicate toxicity, letting you know, hey, stay away or I'll kill you. Poison dart frogs and coral snakes come to mind as examples. Some animals will use this to imitate said poisonous animals, you know, to use color as a form of trickery, the deception that I mentioned previously. 
For plants, I am reminded of castor beans and daffodils, funny enough. When you look at those things, you wouldn't think poisonous, but they are. Uh, gold is a very desirable mineral that has a lustrous yellow color that certainly catches the human eye. So much so that it led to an entire Spaniard expedition into Central America. Yellow is alerting, hazardous, and vibrant like no other. Awareness is the meaning of the color yellow. So keep in mind, the secondaries and tertiaries are combinations of the three primaries, so don't be surprised if many of them sound similar to each other, or sound similar to the previous colors I've explained, or if some take more after one than the others. These colors would differ more in application as opposed to association. The further into the combinations we go, the greater the differences become blurred. So the first of the secondaries is orange. Orange is the essence of ripeness, a combination of red and yellow, passion and awareness, desire mixed with vibrance. Orange is a temperate warm color that is just inviting enough without being too aggressive like red or too intense like yellow. Ripe fruits and vegetables are often associated with the color orange. The harvest time of the year is a wash of many orange shades, all indicative of bounty and prosperity. So, the meaning of orange is ripe. Now, the second is violet. Violet is the essence of temperance, balance, harmoniousness. Violet has the best qualities of both red and blue, passion and stasis. Tempering the heat with coolness creates a very rich color that blends well with most other colors. It doesn't offend or underwhelm the eye. Violet is often seen as royal in nature. This is a fitting extension of temperance, seeing as how a truly royalist individual must maintain balance in their dominion. That being said, violet is the essence of balance. And now we have green. Green is the essence of nature. Shocking, I know. Other than blue, the most common color we'll ever see in this world is green. Green encompasses vibrance and brilliance mixed with subtle stasis. Or calm, I should say. I think that's a more appropriate word. Green has to be the most neutral of all the colors, not identifying as hot or cold. Earthy and inviting, but also mysterious and obscure. Nature hides many dangerous things beneath its subtle surface. There is a strange serenity that follows the visual manifestation of green. So, green is the essence of nature, definitely. And now we are at the tertiaries, the last grouping in the wheel. Now these combinations are more refined and more specific. So first to start, we have magenta. Magenta is the essence of desire. Love and desire are two distinct things, so when I speak of desire, I'm talking about physical desire, attraction, the biological manifestation of love. A deep flush red with a little underlying blue. Magenta has a very intense redness while also playing to blue's subtlety. This color is like locking eyes with someone you find attractive across the room. You know what the other person is thinking and what they want. Now purple. Purple is the essence of regality, a more softer approach to royalty, being a bit more blue than red. Now regality comes from a more peaceful aspect of royalty, being more concerned with the peacekeeping aspect of nobility rather than the war fighting part. Blood orange. Blood orange. This color is the essence of warmth. The feeling of harvest and bounty has a homely hearth feeling when applied in the personal perspective. That's the orange side of the color. Blood orange being closer to red has the benefit of passion and versatility. Love more specifically. But back to the concept of a hearth. The fireplace is one's home. Or the fireplace in one's home is best emblematic of the color of blood orange. All right, cerulean. Cerulean is the essence of life. Cerulean has a very sea aesthetic to it. Blue is a common oceanic color, and green being nature, you can see how marrying the two would create a natural association with living waters. And the sea is filled with so much more biodiversity and life than the surfaces. 
Now, I don't think that's a coincidence, life being this particular color. Lime, the essence of spite. The green of nature in all its encompassing forms mixed with yellow's piercing visuals. Many subtle dangers have that hint of vibrance to it, but also have the appropriate amount of natural camouflage to lure you in. Bile, pus, snot, all the repulsive things tend to adopt this color too. Repulsion typically inspires a spiteful response. It is not a terrible color, and its association is not entirely negative. But anytime you see this color, you can bet there is some sharp twinge accompany accompanying it. Some kind of sourness. Like a lime. A tangerine. This color has the essence of bounty. Bounty being the act and state of coming directly after observing ripeness. Ripeness of orange and awareness of yellow combined creates a natural signal. This signal implies a fruitful feeling and it indicates a sign of maturity, ready to be harvested. Once harvested, the bounty ensues. So uh, there you have it. The basics of the color wheel and their very loosely described applications in psychological slash neurological associations. But again, keep this very important piece in mind. This is a theory. How we see or interpret color varies from person to person, whether it be our eyes or how we were raised and or what we were exposed to in life. Many traits and habits are shared between people, so we know that there is something there, something lurking behind the existence of color, a deeper meaning. I hope this was at least somewhat helpful as a quick intro into the world of color. There'll be more videos about color in the future, not so much as exploring color theory, but more along the lines of discussions of my favorite types or variants of color. Color theory will be an underlying part of it, but the focus is more on what is this color, where can I find it, how good it looks, how best to implement it, uh, a curation of obscure colors, if you will. But that's all for now. I'm just a rambling madman on the internet. Farewell.